Hello friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide. And we are on April 19th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to the Daily Dew. Wow, look at this. We're looking at our first M-Class flare in quite some time. That's right, looking at the last 48 hours on our sun, 304 angstroms, and this is an Earth-facing solar flare. M-Class solar flare. Outgoing images here, lots of plasma in the southern hemisphere of the sun right now, underneath the active sunspot regions. And this is the region that we are looking at right here that emitted the M-class solar flare. Having a quick look here at the multi-spectrum, you can see two large plasma filaments stretching across the southern hemisphere there, right underneath that active sunspot region. And there's also a coronal hole just north of it. So very active sun all of a sudden, as I did post in the other day. Sun has awakened. That is a pretty, it's, well, it's an M-class solar flare and it's the earth facing. Not much to see here on Lasco 2 or 3. Last few images of the last CME. So we've had two CMEs and two solar flares this week and look at our space weather KP index has been elevated ever since it got up to six the other day looking at our magnetosphere you can see here we are being hammered by over 650 kilometer per second solar winds right now and I showed it yesterday so this is quite a comparison for everybody especially the pressure intense and enormous pressure on our planet right now and i'm sure a lot of people who are sensitive to our planet are feeling it as well looking at a real-time solar wind yeah 657 kilometers per second but it jumped up to about 660 almost six 677 kilometers per second so just about 700 looking at a big drop in the temperatures schumann resonance for today a power of 53 we saw the beginning of that spike yesterday in the video it continued pretty much all night long and resonated across the planet so we are sitting at a power of 53 and a quality of 0.8 let's have a look at the last 24 hours for earthquakes starting out here most recently with a 4.9 south sandwich islands region 59 kilometer depth and as well a very active san antonio chile today started out with a 5.2 saw another 5.2 and pretty sizable aftershocks throughout the region calama chile with a 4.4 4.5 peru and as well bolivia peru region 4.5 243 kilometer depth so yeah definitely activity coming back to south america 4.9 here off the coast of Ecuador. Seismicity coming back to San Antonio, Puerto Rico. And as well, activity coming to the North American plate here in Dibble, Oklahoma, 3.5. Texas reporting here, Western Texas, 2.9. California coast, Anderson Springs, hmm, Springs, 4.0, two kilometer depth. Geysers, hmm, 2.7. Petrolia, 2.7. It's a very active region for, to release a lot of pressure. 3.9 here, Stanley, Idaho as well. 
2.5 and as well a 2.6 here to report in Eckford, Canada. That's right. Through Alberta, again, a small earthquake, 2.6 being reported. Alaska is ranging from Elfin Cove to Atka as well. In Nami, Japan reporting a 4.3 today. Shikatan, Russia with a couple 4.3. 4.3 is a big number today for the earthquakes. And then we're going to get to the deepest earthquake today. Philippines with a 4.8 in Gadung, Philippines, 4.8, 617 kilometer depth, as well Indonesia, 4.8, 5.1 there, 4.9, Papua New Guinea, and then our largest earthquake today, 6.0, Sinabung, Indonesia, 10 kilometer depth, and that was right off the coast of North Sumatra close to Sinabung Volcano. As well, 4.3 resonating through Iran. And as well, a rare earthquake here to report in Austria-Hungary border a 3.9. So yeah, a strange earthquake there. You don't report them often here at all. I don't think I have once. Overlooking the last 24 hours, busy across the planet. Still looking at just under 300 earthquakes for the day. Looking at the last seven days for earthquakes. Seismicity coming back to South American plate and in, into Antarctica. And concerning, a bit concerning, seismicity coming back to North American plate. Watch out, Juan de Fuca into the Cascades. As well, Western Ring of Fire, a lot of deep earthquake movements around all of the active volcanoes. That are erupting around the planet. My apologies, I didn't get out to the volcanic activity report that will be coming tomorrow. So please stay tuned for week 17, week six, yeah, week 16 volcanic activity report. I'll show you here the, on the Pacific Disaster Center the most recent volcanoes to update: Era in Japan, Senge in Ecuador, Semeru, Indonesia, Sinabung, Indonesia, Popo in Mexico, Dakono, Indonesia. Swiss and Ajima in Japan, Sekirajima in Japan, Fuego, Guatemala, Semis Napoichnoi, United States, Sabankaya in Peru, Sufri, and the list goes on and on and on. Luwatolo, Shivalich, Bakaya. So yeah, I mean I just updated about 17 volcanoes, and I'm sure that there are more than just the 42 that I recorded last night. So stay tuned to the volcanic activity report coming tomorrow. Overlooking here, the, the only major weather system report is still the tropical cyclone Surigae, but is getting ready to scoot out into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. But still a big low pressure sy systems creating a lot of cloud cover across the world right now. And every continent is recording flooding conditions except for Africa. Looking at the total precipital water for the past 24 hours. You can see all of that moisture stretching away from the equator now. I'll give you a quick show here from the last three days for moisture. And you can see things are really starting to increase and stretch outward from the equator. And I think that might have something to do with all of the ash and SL2 and cloud cover that has been created by all of the volcanoes that are erupting across the world. So normally those lines is where the moisture comes through and it'll extend a little bit into the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere but the way it is stretching now we have a wide wet equator and it is intensifying. Let's have a look at our five-day forecast brought to you by Meteor Earth, Meteor Mike, and show you exactly what's going on here. So we still have spring trying to push its way in to the northern hemisphere, but I think our North Pole is still deciding where it wants to live. Overlooking Alberta, 
Calgary, we do have some more snow coming. That's right for Thursday night. And then watch for some pretty cold temperatures behind that. What a roller coaster event of temperatures and pressure. I mean, I've had headaches for d days now. It's been up and down migraines and sinus pressure. You could just feel it. Looking eastward across the country, cold temperatures stretching down to Colorado reported yesterday. And they are looking at blizzard conditions right now. And then watch for that system to scoot into Ontario and bring same thing, some blizzard-like conditions, a lot of flurries through the Great Lakes. And again, just a very up and down jet stream for temperatures. Season really just doesn't know what it wants to do here. Uh, got winter hanging around for way too long and spring saying, hey, psh, 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 I need to come in. It's not happening. <laughs> Overlooking Europe, we've got a big low pressure system heading towards uh, parts of Spain and Portugal. Low pressure system heading around through parts of Central Europe. But no major weather systems for Europe or Africa, except for a low pressure system just north of Madagascar. Looks like it could develop and make some landfall. I was looking at this storm yesterday, but still not really an area of interest just yet. But we could have quite a few areas of interest here developing in the Indian Ocean over the coming months. So stay aware and prepared and stay tuned to Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide because you will always be updated on the major systems affecting the world. Overlooking Southeast Asia and the West Pacific, Typhoon Surige getting ready to head out. Low pressure system here developing over China could join forces with it in the long range forecast, but still it's going to be an intense system and will carry on eastward in the Pacific, may change things drastically for weather on the west coast. And then again, looking here along the equator, a lot of moisture for the five day forecast developing. And we could see a monster super typhoon develop yet again, just after Surigay ramped up to a category five super typhoon within what, 24 hours. We may see many of these storms develop into devastating events in the near future. So please stay aware and prepared. We've got a quick system here heading towards the West Coast in the long range forecast. Friday into Saturday, we could see some really stormy conditions. And we could see some really snowy conditions here in Alberta. Yay! Yay. But anyways, I want spring. Can you tell? <laughs> Overlooking southeastern United States, watch for extreme weather to break out in the Gulf states later in the week. Same thing here for South America. Other than that, daily evaporation rains. Leave you here. Looking at the major systems that are affecting most of the Northern Hemisphere right now. Much love to everybody. Thanks for watching today. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your morning due. Bye-bye now. Prayers for humanity. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.